What's up everyone, I am Toku Tyler, and today I'm going to be talking Kishi Ryu Sentai, Ryu Soldier, Episode 7. And once again, we have another good episode of Ryu Soldier. I, I really enjoyed it. I was able to follow the story pretty well, the plot and everything, and I enjoyed the singing parts as well. Just something I really liked about it. I just thought it was something, something nice about the episode, at least. It was really good. So, Also, we had a very suspicious situation at the end of the episode, which has me very interested. And so, anyway... Let's get to the episode. We begin the episode with Melto and Asuna being taught by Yui's dad. He is a professor, and I assume they never really went to school or anything, so they're learning things about science and the human world, which is pretty cool, because like they probably lived in that uh, village their entire lives, and it's, you know, so it's they're learning what they can, especially Melto, who's he's all about knowledge and everything, and anyway... Asuna doesn't seem as interested in the lesson as Melto does, so she so she gets up and starts dusting around, and she accidentally breaks something with her superhuman strength, and so she uses the reverse soul to fix it real quick, and then when Melto and Yui's dad ask her what she's doing, she tries to change the subject by asking where Ko is. Melto says he was watching TV with Tiramigo in the house, and... So we get to see Tiramigo walk in, and he's small again, which I really enjoy. Seeing him walk around the house like that, that's really cool. Plus, he can speak a little uh, little bit of their language, which is kind of cool. And Asuna and Melto spring up, and they're surprised by this. They try to teach Tiramigo to say their names, too. And he says Asuna correctly, but when, when Melto tries to get him to do it, he pronounces Melto as Naruto, which is, which made me laugh so much. I, because I like Naruto, the, the anime, if you don't know, but I just, I love that he said that, and it's, I just love that scene so much. My favorite part of the, of the beginning of this episode, just so cool. We then cut to Ko and Yui standing on a bridge over a river. Ko wants to swim in the river to get to the ocean, which leads to the rest of the world. He wants to see the world, and he says, in the 200 years since he was born, he has never left the forest, never left the village or the Ryu Soldier clan. So Yui is shocked, and so am I, to find out that Ko is actually 209 years old. So the Ryu Soldier clan is not completely human as it seems. And I thought they were just humans this whole time who lived as long as we do, but apparently they they age a lot slower than us. So that's that's a cool fact right there. As Ko is about to jump into the water, he stops himself and says he hears something. He uses the audio soul and hears singing in the distance. We then go to Toa and Banba sparring in the woods. They continue their talk about joining the others, but Banba tells him that people will always betray you. If you get too close to them, they will eventually let you down, is what he's saying. And I just, I don't like his mentality when it comes to the team. Something must have happened to Bamba for him to be like this so much. Their conversation gets cut short, after they see a girl being chased by Drun soldiers. The both of them transform and destroy the soldiers quickly with their dino slashes, which are still really cool. It's cool attacks. They ask the girl if she's okay, and she pulls a dagger on them, thinking they're druidons. We then go back to Ko and Yui, where they are following the singing to an amusement park. They soon see a Minosaur attacking everyone with sound waves, which then knocks everyone out, including them. Kurion shows up and starts taking the people away, back into one of the one of the areas at the amusement park and Ko is dragged in there as well uh, but it turns out he wasn't knocked out and he wakes up and he wasn't affected because Yui gave him earplugs earlier on the bridge so Ko then starts taking out the soldiers one by one and tries to wake up Yui and the others but he can't so he has to go after the Minosaur and after he does we then meet the new Druidon in charge I'm assuming I'm assuming he's the new guy to replace Tank Joe his name is Weisel. It's W-Y-Z-U-L. So I'm just going to call him Weisel or Wizul. Weisul? Yeah, Weisul. Okay. And he is about, he's all about entertainment and showing off. Ko doesn't care who he is and transforms to fight him. But then a group of kids start to protect uh, Weisel. Sorry, still getting used to that name. Saying the Ryu soldiers are the bad guys. Somehow these kids are able to fight back and keep Ko away from Weisel. Ko gets blasted back and runs away to figure out what just happened. Back at Yui's house, the girl from before has been brought there 
saying she is the princess of planet Capaeus, I think. So she's a princess from another planet. Melto kneels to her and asks why the Druidon are after her. She says that someone is going around stealing people from planets and making them into slaves. Why Zul is the one who is doing this, she says, so she was kidnapped along with her sister, uh, Fita, on, on their planet by Wyzul. So real quick, since the Druidon have been in space, they have probably been trying to take other worlds and not just focus on Earth. I mean, Earth is their, their target, of course, because that's where they came from, but they have affected other worlds too, and, and the princess is proof of that. The princess then talks about how her and her sister were able to escape, but her sister was the one who landed on Earth and not her. She came here to find her sister, and that's when we saw her being chased. We cut to Wyzul really quickly, where we see him hypnotizing the kids with his eyes, and that's how he's able to do this. He's able to control them by looking at them in their eyes. Back, at, back with the princess, she orders the Rhee soldiers to find her sister, and Toa accepts. Bamba then asks her if she cares for her sister, and she responds by saying she would risk her life for her sister. So Bamba understands how she feels, being Toa's big brother. He understands wanting to protect your family. The princess then steps forward to sing a song just as Ko returns, and Ko tells her he has heard that song before. That was the song he heard earlier, and that he may know where Fita is. They all go to the amusement park, and Kurion has been waiting for them. They all transform as they are fighting, and it just looks so cool how they each put their Ryusos in during the fight, and then... It's just, they, they put their Rhea soul in, they fight the, the soldiers, and then they transform all together, and it's really cool. But Banba doesn't transform, and runs off with Toa following him. As Ko and the others equip their Rhea souls, they are faced with the mind-controlled kids again. The Rhea soldiers can't fight back because they don't want to hurt the kids, obviously. So this gives the Minosaur, who is now huge, the chance to destroy the city and them, Princess Cardina, that's the princess uh, from earlier, shows up and starts to sing her song again. Her singing breaks the mind control of all the kids, and they run off to safety. Now that the Ryu soldiers are free and the kids have been set free as well, they all form Kishiryu three knights to fight the Minosaur, and back on the ground, Bamba finally transforms and finds all the people who were taken, including Yui and the other princess. As the fight with the Minosaur continues, the Minosaur flies up in front of the sun so the Ryu soldiers can't see it clearly. Melto then tells Ko to form the fortress mode of their mech. This formation is a lot cooler to see in the show, and I honestly want to transform my Kishiryu toys into this form now. It's just, it's, it's kind of cool looking. Anyway, they race around the city, getting bombarded by attacks from the sky, until the other Kishiryu jump in and help them. So Tiger Lance jumps in, and then Mir Needle, and Banba says it's not to help the three of them, it's to help the sisters. So they combine into Kishiryu five knights, and Banba gives Melto the idea to polish to, to use the polished soul and reflect the sunlight back at the Minosaur, causing it to fall down to the ground. They use their combined tacks, and then they go for the finisher, but the Minosaur is standing in front of a Ferris wheel full of children on it. The Minosaur flies off and gets away from them, and then we are then we go to the sisters being reunited later on, and Toa says it's good to be together. Bamba thinks he means the sisters, but Toa also meant the five of the Rio soldiers as a team. Bamba says maybe, but is still stubborn about joining the team, so it's it's my my dream of the five of them finally acting as a team together forever. <laughs> is not being realized here. I just want Bonba to tell us what happened to him and for him to get over it and then they could become a team finally. But anyway, that's his deal. We'll find out more about it, I'm sure. But for now, there's still three, a team of three and a team of two, even though Toa really wants to join them. Then as the princess is thanking Ko, Melto notices that Princess Cardina mentioned the Dino Knights when she was thanking them. He says that they never told her, they never mentioned the the word ki, Dino Knights or the Kishiryu when they were talking to her, so how would she know what they are called? Asuna says he's overthinking it, and he still seems suspicious at the end. I mean, he makes a very good point. They never mentioned the Dino Knights to her, and how does she have this knowledge? How does she know what they are? But we don't have all the information yet. 
I hope we'll get a lot more in the next episode, obviously. And yeah, so that's where the episode ends. And all I can say was good episode of Ryu Soldier. It was really good. I love the plot with the two sisters and how it connects with Banba and how the Druidon aren't just, you know, trying to conquer Earth. They've affected other worlds, too, while they've been in space for all these years. So it was it was cool to learn more about that. Also, the fun part with Tiramigo talking. That was cool. I love that. And even though the, the Minosaur got away, we will continue the fight in the next episode. Plus, I want to see what Melto can figure out about the princess knowing about the Dino Knights. I'm really curious about that. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell to be notified of future videos. And I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.